With YouTube attacking alternative media, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon for just a dollar per month. Link below. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater and Star Wars has been a very divisive topic over the course of the past three months. And while the movie is now on digital release, soon to be out on home video, uh, a lot of people are going to be talking about Episode 8 once again and it's, it's, it's pros and it's, it's, it's many, many cons. Um, but that being said, it's it's not going to stop the Star Wars machine. With any luck, they might look at the blowback from it and sit there and think, okay, there are things here we can do differently. There are things we can we can we can try that are different that are going to maybe I don't know reunite the fan base going forward. Because if not, we're going to see the law of diminishing returns happen again and again and again and again and again. Seeing that Star Wars: The Force Awakens was over two billion dollars, then Rogue One was like one point six billion, and The Last Jedi is one point three billion. Uh, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. Who knows what Solo is going to pull in worldwide? We don't know. We we have no idea what Solo is going to pull in worldwide, uh, and then again, Episode Nine next year, we don't know what that is going to pull in worldwide. So ultimately, the idea here is uh, there needs to be some kind of shift, some kind of change with Lucasfilm, and ultimately, that does start at the top. Kathleen Kennedy needs to realize that she is not the person to manage Star Wars, and I think this comes from her decades of working with George Lucas. Lucas never had a plan; he never really had a long term vision for Star Wars. He didn't. And I think that's apparent to the fact that he had to be, you know, kind of like forced into doing the Clone Wars TV show. Uh, and, you know, he almost had to be kind of forced into doing Indiana Jones 4. Like you could see that there was some reluctance from him to, to even like do anything with the, with these properties. And then here comes Disney in 2012, drops $4 billion to buy it. Lucas didn't even really put up a fight. He was already contemplating selling it at the time anyway. And bam, done. We're good. You know, Disney now has it. Now, what does Disney want to do with it? Well, of course, they want to make everything Star Wars. They want to make everything uh, a franchise in order to, you know, get the money back uh, that they've spent. And to be fair, they've earned the money back that they spent originally on it at this point, I'd argue. So it's been five years. Right. Uh, and they've made their money back and now they want to go into the future and, and they want to make everything Star Wars. Well, what have we seen so far? For one, the merchandise is not selling very well. Uh, there's been multiple reports about that. The blowback to The Last Jedi due to the way that the narrative structure played out, which was crap, uh, it has had a lot of uh, divisive impact. The loss of the EU has really angered people. And then bringing in elements of the EU into the new canon has really angered those people. And we have a story group that ultimately doesn't work on the films, but they work on the books. The I'm not saying the books are bad. I'm just saying that like the books aren't going to pull you in a billion dollars. So why is it that the story group is not focusing on the movies? Why is it that the, the story group is not focusing on the, what, what's going to you know have the best return? Why aren't they writing the stories that are going to bookend uh, you know, or c continue the arc going and then have all the ancillary content written to support where the film arc is. It, it should be like Marvel. This, that's the whole point I'm trying to say here. Ke Kathleen Kennedy is not Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige may run Marvel Studios, but he's a hands-on producer. Kennedy is not a hands-on producer. This is, I think, apparent. If she was a hands-on producer, Phil Lord and Chris Miller wouldn't have shot the majority of Solo and then been fired. If she was a hands-on producer, Colin Trevorrow would not have been let go so late into the game. Uh, this is this is where you see that there is a a, a very big fault in, in the power uh, you know levels over there at, at Lucasfilm. And it's not that things aren't fixable. It's not that things aren't uh, repairable. It's just that right now we can see that there is. A, a problem with the upper level leadership, not knowing what the hell to do. And again, as I said, I think a lot of that has to do with Lucas. I think a lot of that has to do with just his lack of a long-term vision over something he ultimately didn't want uh, to do. He didn't want to do it. And, and there's that, and that's fine. Ultimately, look, that's fine. But what, but what Kathleen Kennedy is struggling with right now is the Disney model. Okay. Kevin Feige was a perfect person to come on in and take over uh, or else to, to take to take over that when when Marvel was purchased by Disney back in 2010 because he was already a producer on a, a number of Star Wars or a number of Marvel films he already knew the characters inside and out he already you know was was he already knew what, what was available and he brought in the talent to make it and through his leadership his guidance and his ability to to create that's why we've gotten what we've gotten and why it's been popular and why it's been long lasting we're talking 10 years and 19 movies 
here in the next few weeks. So that is a big thing, a big accomplishment. Kathleen Kennedy is not Kevin Feige. I think if, 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 there's, ever, if there's any if ever a takeaway from this particular video is, is that particular point. She's not him. She needs somebody who is like him. She does. She needs somebody to come on in, man, woman, I don't care, but to come on in and to have a vision for Star Wars. And I do believe ultimately that is exactly what's going to be happening with uh, with with the guys from Game of Thrones, uh, D.B. Weiss and David ben, uh, Benhoff, um, because those guys know what it's like to run a series and to create a narrative, a long lasting multi arc, multi season narrative with a wide variety of characters that are fleshed out, that have full backstories that people legitimately care about. Game of Thrones is the biggest show in the world, right? You've got, you've got 40 million people plus pirating the damn thing on top of those that are watching it on the apps and on HBO. Like people love Game of Thrones. And as a result, those guys coming in to do a series uh, of, of films, right? Not a trilogy, but a series of films is the best course of action. Now, also what Mar or, uh, Marvel, what Lucasfilm should do is look at how Marvel does its release schedule. Am I talking like three, four Star Wars movies a year? No, 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 no. That would be burnout. But two is absolutely fine. Two is absolutely fine, especially if you're trying to tell a narrative and then maybe like have an arc, a multi-film arc, but then also have a lot of uh, a lot of ancillary content that ties into it and that is where they should be at right now if i were if i were kathleen kennedy i would talk to the game of thrones guys and go look you're finishing up season nine or season eight it's almost done as soon as that's over come here get together a writer's room take or just take over our writer's room come in establish the arc that you want to tell right probably going to be a series of films four to five maybe more have them come out one every other year very much like the episodes or one a year depending on their shooting schedule and then tell that story over time but then also treat it very similar to the harry potter franchise and to have one long narrative that sees its beginning and its end, but each chapter has a beginning and an end and the directors have the playroom. Basically, she needs a good producer. She needs a, a very good producer in order to, to have those, uh, those, those things click because that's right now what the audience wants. And I'm not lying. The audience right now ultimately wants bingeable television. And they'll take it in their movies if the movies are coming out frequently enough as with Marvel putting out three films a year right? All tied into a greater narrative overall, but still being relatively individual enough. That's what they're doing. People want that. People want Netflix. They want the 13 episodes they can watch over a weekend. They want to get a full, complete story. This is what Star Wars has to do. What the biggest mistake Star Wars made was episode eight, because everything that Ryan Johnson did was almost like counterproductive to what J.J. Abrams set up. Yes, it might have been a darker, more adult, maybe more mature take on Star Wars, which again, ultimately is not a bad thing. But the way that the narrative structure was handled, the fact that it felt like two movies rolled into one but still cut down for time, did not play out in the larger uh, the, to the larger narrative and it confused a lot of fans. It made them feel like they were watching the end of Star Wars, not the middle portion of a new trilogy. So whatever happens next is going to seriously have to correct the course that Ryan Johnson screwed up with episode eight. And you're never going to be able to convince me that he did not make some serious problems for the franchise going forward, but there are ways to fix it. Let JJ Abrams finish episode nine, cancel the Ryan Johnson trilogy, just end it. Just move away from that right now. Don't even bother with it. It's not going to be worth it unless, unless that trilogy is being overseen by the Game of Thrones guys or Dave Filoni or someone equivalent. Hell, I'd even take Simon Kinberg at this point. But do that. Put that out there and make him work underneath somebody. Because here's the deal. I will give Ryan Johnson credit for this. He's a good director. He's a very solid director. He's a bad storyteller and he needs someone to kind of oversee how he's doing things in order to be able to get it right. And I, I'm, I'm part, partly kind of wondering if uh, if if the, the problems with Gareth Edwards on Rogue One and how how much how they shot the movie like a war documentary and the problems with uh, Ryan Johnson when it comes to episode eight, it just boils back up to the leadership. Kathleen Kennedy. That is right now the cancer that is in Lucasfilm. And I have nothing against the woman personally. 
And at no point am I attacking her, her ability to run a studio, but I am criticizing her ability to lead a franchise. I'm criticizing her ability to actually put forth an effort to tell a, I guess you could say a, a decent narrative story that's falling in line with the, with the, what people want now, because people want a good story. People want Game of Thrones. People want Marvel. Star Wars took a huge hit with with Episode Eight. <laughs> it did. It really did. And when you have Mark Hamill going out there and like kind of throwing shade at uh, at some of the haters uh, and him backtracking comments that he made, you know, for whatever reason, I have my own theories, but for whatever reason, you know, there's something that's that's wrong. So I'd very much like to see Kathleen Kennedy uh, either step back and let someone else take over. Or I'd like to see Bob Iger replace her with someone who can actually do the job. And I know that's a harsh statement to make. And I know people out there will disagree with me. And it's not that I want to see anyone fired. I personally felt that when Lucas stepped down and he handpicked her as his successor, that that was the right choice. But I was wrong. A lot of people were wrong. And the only person there who can make that change is Iger. And I'm hoping that he sees that if you want Star Wars to be the success that you paid for, you have to look at how your other studios are handling these kind of narrative projects and get the other ones in lockstep for success. If not, episode eight and the blowback from that is not going to be the only time this happens. And progressively, it's only going to get worse as fans feel that the franchise is slowly dying. Correct the course, create the narrative, get the good producer, basically kind of become Game of Thrones or Marvel Cinematic Universe, hell, or even Harry Potter, and that will fix it. But until then, you're kind of flying blind, and a lot of people are noticing. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been 3 Buck Theater. Uh, if you guys <laughs> want to support the channel, links below in the video description. Or if you just want to see more content from me, you can do so right now. 